Welcome to the Revolution of One live stream. This is TK Coleman, and today I'm here to talk with you about why the best gifts come from the bottom. Man, I'm so pumped up about today's guest. This brother has been hailed by many as the next Les Brown, and he is one of the top motivational speakers in the world, but he truly did start from the bottom. He went from being homeless to being the first motivational speaker in history to speak a paid gig at the prestigious Fashion Week in Milan, Italy. This guy has gone from no one knowing his name to preaching and, and preaching sermons to himself by himself with no audience to being the guy that everybody is in demand for. And uh, if you don't know the name of, of William King Hollis, uh, please write it down and make note because you will hear that name. And he's one of the few people who actually embraces the term motivational speaker. A lot of people run from that. A lot of people are like, no, please don't call me motivational speaker. Not this brother. He still believes in the power of motivation and he's proving the value of it every day in his work. Please welcome the author of The Best Gifts from the Bottom, international motivational speaker and entrepreneur, William King Hollis. Thanks for joining us, brother. Man, thank you, Kings, for having me on, oh, man. I'm, I'm extremely honored to be on here today. Um, I just think back to where I started, bro, and, and to be on sitting here, um, being interve interviewed by T.K. Coleman, the King, uh, Camus. All the time, I'm a, I'm a butcher the last night. I don't even want, I, I don't even want to try to attempt it. My boy, K.O. <laughs> there you go. But, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool I'm, with that. <laughs> But I'm honored, kids. But I'm, I'm just extremely honored to be on the show, man. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, bro. One one question I want to lead off with is with this whole label of motivational speaker. Um, I, I was I was just interviewing someone last week who who said people call him a motivational speaker and he hates that term. And I hear that a lot. Everybody hates being called motivational speaker, and you embrace it. And one of the things you said to me on the phone, we was talking last week, is you was like, "Hey, we still need motivation. Motivation is underrated." I want you to riff on that for me a little bit and tell me why the world still needs motivation. Yeah. Let me tell you, let me tell you, the elite individuals of the world, they don't like motivation because motivation inspires people to do what? Things on their own, which takes their pawns away. So when I talk about motivation, motivation is like water and ice. It, it goes together very well. And anything we do if we are educated we must be motivated to apply that education you can never have one without the other education and motivation are always going to live in the same house under the same roof because you can be educated you can have all the knowledge in the world and never use your degree to become a lawyer never use your degree to become a nurse you didn't got all this education but you never became what you got that education for and the reason why is because you wasn't inspired or motivated to go towards it. Without motivation and inspiration, you will never see some of the greatest entrepreneurs, some of the greatest stars, some of the greatest people of the world. Every individual was fueled by one thing. That was motivation. And that's their mother, that's their fathers, that's their, their motivation is in so many more forms than just a person. It's 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 it's, it's, it's that very thing that that eats at your soul every single night, bro, because that's what you have to say. That's what you have to change. And growing up in the inner cities and in, in, in the blocks that we come up from, we literally have to see it in our minds before we have it. If you do not have this ability, most of the time you will not make it out of that situation. You must be able to see things before it's in your hand, King. And like I said, motivation creates all of this. And I believe that you can motivate and educate at the same time. Yeah. And, 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 and that's something that no motivational speaker has brought to the table. They went straight to the money, straight to, oh, I have to fix this. Everything is simple. I know this because I spoke my way out of a shelter. If an individual wants something in his life, he will wake up every single day and he will chase that. Can't no man tell me he hungry, he wants something, and he don't wake up and go after it every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day. Because we already behind the eight ball. 
I tell people all the time, I don't want to be 50 and flying a jet. I want to be 38 and flying a jet. I don't want to wait because I know I know something. I know something to be true. The internet is cut out the middle, man. You can't hold that door shut no more. You can't hide this talent. And if you're a believer in whatever you believe in, I know my creator has never created anything that's supposed to be the best and the only greatest of all time. That's like saying a chef that, 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 that starts off cooking chicken or starts off cooking steaks, he's not going to get better at cooking steaks 20 or 30 years down the line. You can't call what I'm what I'm saying is there is no greatest of all time. Greatness is continuously going to be created for the entirety of our lives. Because our, our creator is a masterpiece and he's always working on masterpieces. The great things we saw in Les Brown, that was a masterpiece. That was the masterpiece of the era, of that era, of that time. That's why when me and Les Brown, Les Brown literally became a father of mine. No speaker in the industry has ever reached out to talk to me and help me. No speaker. But the Most High sent me the greatest of all time, bro. That's why I tell people, you don't have to, the, the biggest mistake we make in life is worrying about the things we think we need. Let me repeat that. The reason why most people don't reach their full potential in their dreams is because of the things they think they need. When I finally realized that I had what it take, mm. that I got to do the work, that I got to mm. learn marketing. You ever seen that movie, Dolomite? I am him. How you doing, Mr. Hollis? <laughs> no, this is not Mr. Hollis. This is Mr. James. Uh, where are we coming today? I represent William Hollis. If you saw the movie Dolomite, you will understand what I'm talking about. You got to do whatever it takes to build that brain and build that name so strong that it's not a stain on it. It's not a stain on it. I, I, I came in the industry and I said, I'm not going to play the game. I'm going to change the game. I was listening to an interview with Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor said, a guy was interviewing him. He said, Conor McGregor, how does it feel to come from all being poor and now having all of these millions and millions of dollars? Being able to go out and get all these yachts and boats and all, he said, that doesn't matter. When I started off in the industry, I had one goal, and that's to be the best in the game, the best at what I do and the best in my division. And by becoming the best, I will become the best and I'll make the money like the best. I will be the highest paid. Everything comes when you put in the work. Everything comes when you put in the work. Right now, I'm over 500 million views on YouTube. I'm a TV show away from all those 500 million people pointing at their TV screen and saying, that's who I've been listening to for six years. And that kid only 31 years old. That's when I do something they never seen before. That's when I sell a million independent copies of my book by myself. Because I, most Man. speakers release a book before they even start. They have a book before they even become a speaker. I was a homeless man in a shelter and I start speaking. That's why I tell people, this ain't, I ain't choose this. That's why when I say motivational speaker, it's my duty to always call myself that. Because I didn't get in this to make a million dollars. I got in this because the world became my psychiatrist, man. Sheesh. Man, you know what I love about your story, bro? Psychiatrist, and every speech I delivered, every person that was inspired, I met another person just like me, and I built a family. It's two different business models. It's picking and it's planting. Picking and planting. When you plant, you eat forever. The athletes, the future NFL players, the future doctors, the future lawyers, the future Grant Cardones. The future King Hollis is, guess who umbrella they under? Mom. I don't want to focus on, I don't want to focus on all this stuff that came before me. I want to focus on everything that's new to the world. It might take some time for your overhead to come or your investment to turn back around, but I promise you, if you stay down, it will be 
fruitful. You will never have to worry about another thing in your life. I've never sold a product in my life. This book is my first product. I made, I spoke my way out the shelter and have two homes and two cars off of this. Nothing else, nothing else. There's nothing else involved. Hey, it, I just can't even help myself with smile because like, yeah. I think one, not everybody has the gift of motivational speaker. Like so, so I think some people are really good communicators and some people are really good with people, but to go from where we started at this call and I was trying to down a cup of coffee cause my day has been lagging to your opening statement where I'm fired up and I'm ready to match your energy. That's a gift. You know, everybody wasn't blessed with that. And your ability to rise the energy level, even in a virtual room is real, bro. Is real. Appreciate um, everything. I truly do. I, Thank you, man. I, I want to start off by asking you because just based off of me kind of scrolling on your social media, are you from Atlanta? No, I'm from Pontiac, Michigan. Michigan. Okay. Tell tell people a little bit more. What did what did the what did starting from the bottom really look like? Um, what was the bottom like? Paint a picture for how how low that bottom was that you came from. Imagine a kid facing depression every single day, missing his father, uh, missing love, having to go out every single day and fight for his life. With no, with no lessons or, 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 or education on how to be a man. Um, it was pure insanity. Um, it was a lot of young kings that had to cover up a lot of pain and keep going. Kings that felt a lot of pain, but they knew if they stopped going, they was going to die in that spot. So growing up where I'm from, you can put your hand on the ground and touch the devil's fingertips. You see a lot of murders. You see a lot of death. You see a lot of adolescent young kings with no father, and you see a lot of kings raised by the street. A lot of people don't understand this. Coming from the projects and coming from the hood, what's the difference between, between being dead and broke? In my neighborhood, there's, there's no difference. Because if you can't feed yourself, if you can't take care of your family, you feel dead. You feel like a zombie, just existing, not living. So when they get mad at these kids for going out and they hitting the streets, it's because they know they're going to die soon. So it's nothing. They say, yo, King, dry this dope out this city. That might be the only chance that kid ever get to leave his city. It's to sell dope. He never saw nowhere. But his only shot is to leave the city and sell dope. Not because he want to, because he know his life span is limited. He don't have that long. So if you already dead, I put my life on the line. I put my life on the line to go to jail. I'm already locked up. I'm just locked up in a in a in a, in a tomb of depression. Penitentiary make it easier on them because they don't gotta see things. They ain't gotta keep up with the Joneses. They confined to a box that doesn't have any expectations. So when I grew up king, I grew up in a place. The best example I can give you is like the movie 300. When the, when the kid was in the cave with the wolves as a kid. And the ones who made it out is the ones who fought their way out. You know what I mean? That's the best example I can give you about my city. Hey, I got to ask you about this phrase you've used twice now. It's so powerful to me. You said, I spoke myself out of the shelter. Talk about those days for me when you were in the shelter and what exactly did you say to yourself to get out of that rut and get to where you are now? I was a survivor. I don't ever get anybody getting misunderstood. I would, I would go crash at, <laughs> you know, a person's house or this house, you know, I, I was survivor. The nights I had to stay in there when I did, and I stayed. One day I had a I had a vision, man. I had a I had a speech in my heart, man, and um, it was called Young King, and uh, I recorded it with a pillow and an iPhone voice memo, and today it's over 2.2 .2 million views on YouTube. It's called Young King, Mike Tyson in it, and um, it's my story. I created, you know, you heard Eric Thomas the Guru speech. That's a Greek mythology story. That's of another story. My story, the young king, if you when you guys get a chance to listen to it, 
you, that's my true story. That's my story. You know what I mean? Like that's nobody else's story. It's over 2.2 million views. My first speech was over 2.2 million views, bro. So when I when I when my video went viral, I kind of recognized my gift. I recognized how far I can really go. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I can honestly tell you, man, that uh, the Most High put me into this 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 field, and when I came in it, man, he spoiled me. I went from sleeping in the back of a Taurus, bro, to flying to Milan, bro, to taking my last of my hundred and twenty dollars after getting evicted, creating my football speech, paying the cameraman. That's the first speech I ever was seen on camera, and it's the number one football speech in the world now. I can't make it up. I, all I can say is I walked in his footprints, man. I just, I didn't care about if I could understand it. I didn't care about what was going on. I didn't care about who was saying, Will, you need to get a job. I'm not doing nothing. I'm going to work for the higher power. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to inspire millions. And to the point I was standing in the trenches in Kingston with the Dons. The Don told me it's never been a speaker from America to speak here in Kingston. In the hood. But William King Hollis, you did. <laughs> he said, they scared. They go to Montego Bay, Will. They don't come here. <laughs> they even tell the tourists, you don't go to Kingston. But when I go to Kingston, I spoke for 20 minutes. And I remember walking down the road. And I'm going to send you guys this video through Instagram so you know it's real. I turned around and the whole city was walking behind me. Sheesh. I don't lie to you. I, and, 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 and that's why I'm so beautiful in my career right now. Because I'm young. I know I haven't even hit the ice tip of the iceberg of my knowledge and what I want to do in my life and my career. But something that's very important to me and that means something to me is awakening the kings and the queens inside of all my people and really making them understand how special we are. I'm at a certain spiritual level that whatever I want this universe to give me, I can command it because I know my power as a black man. I know, I know my bloodline. And I also know a king is not a king by the crown he wears. A king is a king by his bloodline, no matter what. And I say all the time that our people are like zombies walking in the desert. Imagine us walking in the desert. We have gold, we have a crown, we have diamonds, we have jewelry all over our bodies. And as we walk, a certain man saw that man, shot him with a tranquilizer, tried to delete his memory. And when he woke up, they took his gold, they took his crown, they took his diamonds, they took his love, they took his respect, they took everything from him. And when he woke up, he didn't know who he was anymore. I live my life every day being that man, that zombie, that king that woke up and remembered. And now I spend the rest of my life reminding other kings worldwide until I die that you are royalty. My gift became so powerful when I was speaking to a certain race and then other races started to relate. That's when I knew that it was bigger than motivational speaking. Mm. I'm a revolutionary, King. I'm a type of person, you can put me in the village of Ghana and I'll bring you warriors. I know my power. I know my gift and I know my mission in life. That's half the problem. That's half the solution. As long as you know your mission, I know my mission. I tell people all the time, when have you found what you were born to do? When it becomes easy to you and amazing to the world. Let me pause you That's right here truth. because I think, I think you're hitting on something really good. I mean, honestly, it's hard to interview you because I just want to let you talk the whole time. I, I don't want to stop <laughs> you. I just want to let you just keep going and then drop, drop dimes and game to people. 
But I, I do man, want shout out to I my want... brother TK Coleman, man. Shout out to TK oh. Coleman, man. My brother, man. Hey, look, you're you're revolutionary, and it only is fitting that you talk to our audience of Revolution One because I think a lot of people maybe haven't came from the same backgrounds that you've came from, but are facing the challenge of trying to unlock that gift, right? Trying trying to figure out how um, they can let the creator magnify their presence and magnify their potential, right? By tapping into their to their gift, and so I think one of the things, kind of going back to your background, right? Be, being in this cave with, with a whole bunch of wolves. I think what I know living in the inner city, what I know going to those public schools, what I know being in rough areas, like there's only so many options on how to elevate your way out. At least that's what you're shown, right? You're either shown you can go with this um, the sports route, become a professional athlete. You can go the entertainment route, um, get into music, or you can go the street route and you know, whatever that entails. But I want to I'm, I'm really curious to know how did you like tap into yourself and, and recognize your gift is chasing other like paths. I, I think it's really tempting for us to do what's flashy, to do what's sexy, to do what's socially popular. Um, and a lot, you know, probably as a speaker, you didn't even think that was a cool gift. You were just like, it's this thing that I know how to do. But you decide to lean into to your own power instead of going, you know, the commonly traveled road. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I started yeah. like, I didn't start off like a child, bro. I, I was 14, 15 years old driving heroin with my father and my cousin in Las Vegas. The first time I learned about boxing brief, that was putting heroin in my boxing brief, and we was driving down there. I was 16, 17 years old in the strip club with them boys, with my pops, DMX. I remember going to the strip club with DMX and my father. So I didn't grow up like a lot of young kids. I, I had to mature and grow up really, really fast. And um, what I realized is when I was around my father, my father was a very, very dangerous man. And I noticed my father, we looked alike, we were alike, we laughed alike, we did a lot of things. But when my father done, when my father used to do violent things, I always, I never, I respected him, I loved my father, but I, I didn't, that never was the thing I wanted to do. I never wanted to cause harm to people. I never wanted to hurt people. I always wanted to smile. I always wanted to make other people smile. So when I tell people, I realized at a very young age that I was gonna to have to become a man before I became one. And a lot of young kids gotta understand this. It's going to be hard. It's not gonna be easy. You're not gonna to wanna to live some days. You're not gonna to wanna to be here some days. But it's your decision to keep fighting. I can't lie to the world and tell them that everything gonna be peaches and cream because it's not. It's gonna be painful. It's gonna be brutal. And I know a lot of people in my life that had to do a lot of bad to do a lot of good. And I had no choice but to do that bad to do a lot of good. Because it's just like taxes, ladies and gentlemen. You can be poor on the side of a Turkey Hill gas station or poor sitting at a bus stop with no money, no nothing, and the cars just ride past you. They give you nothing. But one day you can create something special, and then you start to make a little money. And then they take from you when they never gave. That's life. Unfair. It's unfair, but it's worth it, I guess. I got a mission in my life to become a powerful young black man of ownership, create my own platforms for my own events so I can bring other young black speakers on the stage with me and say, no, you don't have to pay $20,000. You on there for free because your story matters, young king. I want to make so much money that I never have to worry about their money. I want to make so much money that when they come in my realm, whatever money they make is theirs every single dollar every single dollar i feel like this generation no generation has ever had a generation who gave without expectation i said what if we had a man who gave without expectation that would make one of the greatest men ever a legendary king king so, i love the way let me ask you about this money tip, man, because I love the way the way you own the, the respect for money. 
And you're very honest about that. And I feel like it's a lot of people today, they, they have this stigma of money, maybe because they seen somebody abuse it or they got some rich person in their lives that they resent. And, and, and they just talk about, I want meaning, I don't care about money. And, and you talk about both, like, hey man, these both are powerful forces in our community. I want you to make the case for money, man. Tell the people that's listening, why does money matter and why should it be something that you don't just dismiss as having nothing to do with making a difference in this world? Money is like the blood that runs through your veins. Without cash, it means nothing, people. Let me, let me, let me, let me get that out the way. It's worth nothing, people. It's nothing more than paper. It's something that we use just like when we was kids, when we go to the fair, it's our ticket into the fair. But in money terms, it's our ticket to our cars, our clothes, our everything we had. It's something that the elite created for us to need. A dollar is made out of the same material that you give. The same material as your movie ticket. It's no difference. But we look at the two things in different ways. I, I realize this that money is a freedom it is a way to express yourself and create anything you want for yourself on this earth what i want to do with money and what i believe money is i want to use money to create financial freedom across the world it's something that i dreamed about and i'm creating it's called kings and queens united and to break this down is basically like this, King. You remember when we were younger and we we had Kool-Aid or something or whatever? We not, we don't have sugar though. We gotta go knock on the door at, at Miss Jones' house. Miss Jones, you got some sugar for us? Can we get a little scoop? Yeah, you get a scoop. I want to magnify that. I want that black kid that's sitting in Chicago. That's a gangbanger, but a hell, a hell of a chef. I want, I want somebody to send that, that kid his own soul so he can cook for himself. If you got one set in your garage, if you got one here, we unite together. When he don't got, she got it. If she don't got it, he got it. We got it. It is nothing on this world that we don't have for ourselves. We, don't, we got things setting in garages when it's a kid that need it in Indiana and Detroit. It's a black man that gave up on his recording dream. And he got this recording equipment sitting in the basement. I figured out a way to bring Kingston, Jamaica, and Jamaica back to the promised land. I got introduced and I saw an artist named by the name of Kofi. And when I went over there, they said, um, they said, man, we ain't even know about Kofi. But Kofi is a mega star in the United States. So I'm in the hood and I, I start hearing kids singing. And I said, this is a fruit tree. Pure artist. So what I did was I decided and I made a declaration to build Marcus Garvey Studios in Kingston, Jamaica. Mm. My plan is to get the managers but the managers don't get percentages this is something they must agree to they get exposure the percentage that's supposed to go to the manager goes to the community to build apartments and state-of-the-art facilities for them because they still living in tents and cans and and, and, and kids still running around in their socks and all barefooted dead bodies all over the place, pollution all over the place. The treatment of those people are, 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 are is, if you, that, that trip to Kingston, Jamaica was my trip to Mecca. Mm, yeah. That was my trip to Mecca. Cause I know now, yeah, well, you can be the biggest speaker in the world, but what are you talking about? What do you represent? What you stand for? A man will only be remembered for what he stood for. So for me, King, I, I'm, 
I'm in a I'm in a transformational moment in my life, man. I, I think I think I, I'm I'm truly starting to get my calling. I'm truly starting to understand everything about my life, and 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 it's so crazy. I'm booked overseas on the regular. These are the people who reach out to me the most. It's crazy to me now. That's why when I talk to people, I'm like, bro, I'm not, I'm never gonna be the one sitting here acting like I'm this superstar or I'm any of this stuff. I'm just a guy that heard the calling on my life and I ran towards the sign. That's it. And when I ran towards the sound, I discovered the gift in myself. The ability to freestyle speeches. I never write. I never wrote a speech in my life. So, I get my messages from people like y'all. These conversations, people in the street. It could be a bum. It could be a drug addict. But it's almost like when I when I meet a person that talk to me about pain, it's like the Most High tell me to create that message. Like, son, create that message. You know, I want to ask you. Studio, it co it comes out, man. I want to ask yeah, you a question. Out. How how are you able to take messages because you have a voice and you have a story that I think a certain audience can relate to, right? People who grew up in the inner city, uh, people who've been through a similar type of struggle. How are you able to take take you know take this message and relate it to people who you know may live in the UK or who may live in in africa like how, how are you able to to take your message and 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 reach new audiences people who aren't from the places that you're from because you can't fake real you can't fake real and what people see in me they just want real this is a generation of real authentic king hollis is authentic he wears his own gold chains. He wear Cartier glasses. He don't got to put on those suits like everybody want him to do. I'm the rock star in the industry. I make my rules. So when it when it comes to um when it comes to the people, King, uh, I I think that um I had a brain fart. Y'all gonna be able to edit this? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, no, keep keep it going. I, I like the real. Keep it going. You good? You guys got me. You guys got me going so hard, man. I got <laughs> I, I, I got so much. Like, bro, like y'all. You, if you notice, I love doing this, bro. So I'll be trying to get so much stuff out. So, King, give me that question one more time. Can you lay? Man, I, I, I think you you were hitting on it. Um, you in in so many words, you were talking about authenticity, and and I, my question was, how are you able oh, to take yes, a message? It was the key. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. how are you able to take <laughs> a message? I used to play linebacker. Really I used to play linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> so listen though, I'm gonna answer your question, King. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like I said, I think it's authenticity, King. That's that's the reason why I believe that I'm able to reach every type of person in the world because everybody is tired of this fake. You can be all you can be. No, you can't if you don't work. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't yeah. if you don't work. That is a lie. That is a lie. So I think I think being real, man, and I think, and man, I swear, everybody can do what I'm doing. Everybody is an expert in something in this world. You just got to teach it. The difference between you Man. and the expert is the expert put expert on his website. <laughs> <laughs> hey, King, man, check it out. This, this is so powerful because you got so many people, they get caught up in these identity tracks. Like, like they try so hard to figure out what people want and they start yeah. They start the journey of being themselves by figuring out what they think people are gonna like. Oh, maybe I need to curse, you know, because people want to hear me curse, or maybe I need to not curse because I'm gonna drop people away. And it's like, no, like people just want the real you. If the real you doesn't curse, and you try to do that to 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 be relevant, they gonna see right through you. And at the same time, if you try to talk in a way that's not natural to you in the name of being professional, they gonna see through that. It don't matter if people from the burbs, if people from the hood, if people are white, black, rich, poor. All we all want is real, and there's nothing that brings us together like authenticity. And you represent that 
so hard. You represent it so hard. My favorite movies is based on the true story. I look for that in all my movies. I don't like yeah. no fabrication. No fabrication. <laughs> hey, so let me ask you something about this revolutionary concept, because you said I'm a revolutionary earlier. W one of the things that, um, that, that we talk about a lot on Revolution of One is how when a lot of people think about creating change or making the world better, they always put it on government. And so people are always getting their hearts broken whenever a politician gets elected that they don't like. And that's always going to happen, fair or not. And one of the things you was talking about earlier is like, hey, if it's a brother over here that need help, let's come together and figure out a way we can help that brother so we're not sitting around depressed if the president don't do it. I want to hear your take on what people can do to kind of unplug from politics a little bit and focus on the systems of governance and change that they can build by, by bettering themselves and working together with the people in their own communities. Well, I'm glad you said that. I am a Hall of Fame member, one of the youngest Hall of Fame members in uh, the Marcus Garvey organization. And uh, it's funny you say that. Uh, I believe it's all about separation. Uh, not separating people and splitting people up and not being together as a race. Obviously, we know times have changed. But one thing about it is, until African-American people come together at a table with all the so-called leaders, with all the so-called professional revolutionaries and doctors and lawyers, and they tell everybody come off their high horse to understand this, that, that we're not the whole puzzle. Each and every one of us is only a piece of the puzzle. And until we bring those pieces together, we won't be able to see the pictures that our ancestors have for us. We have a lot of greatness, King, but because of years and years of trauma, years of uh, uh, the African-American person and individual has the best example I can give you is it's a Super Bowl game, but the other team has your whole entire play call sheet for the entire game. So we're playing the game and they already know our plays. So to prevent a man from knowing your plays, you must create your own league and submit your own plays, control the narrative. If you don't ever control the narrative, I don't think about politics. I don't care about that. Everybody in the politics is an employee, including the president. He is a worker, a representative of the elite. I know this. So you're looking, I'm just trying to, I'm asking people. In the entirety of our lives living in the hood, out of all the presidential campaign, what happened for us? Whatever happened for us? I'm sorry, God. Man, you're going to make it look like I cut you off for that. I love that message, bro. <laughs> no, business was calling. <laughs> what happened? I, I'm just, I, I, I just, that's, that's king. Like I said, man, I ain't gonna go too deep into that. But we need you can go as deep as you want to go with that, King. You can go as deep as need, you want to go with that. Need, that's what, that's we what need, we need. We need separation. We need separation. We need to we need to go to a place and we must come together, bro. We gotta we gotta reconnect with each other. Because right now the, the black woman is disconnected from the black man, the black man is disconnected from the black woman. We are starting to hate each other. We are starting to hate each other, man. We got the whole world, half of this, certain people hating us. And, the co and, and, and during this pandemic, it, it just turned us against each other even worse. I see these young kings, man, they're shooter king faster than ever now, man. The video games, the 90 babies generation, man, they are murderers. <laughs> They are murderers because they grew up playing that game and they know how to shoot it. They know how to move. That game was really, they, that was real moves they was doing. Black kid, let me tell you what a, a gift the black kid got, because I had it. 
When I couldn't go to football camps as a kid, I would watch video YouTube videos all day, all day, all day. When I got on the field, I could literally emulate the same thing, the same way, the same speed, and the same style. The young black king has the ability to watch something and do it almost better than what they watch. That's the gift we got. It's the truth. Now you see kids shooting, shooting from a distance, jumping off buildings, jumping off cars, shooting, doing everything. And they murder for fun. Mm. But I know something. I, my, my granddad taught me something as a little as a little boy. And he told me, he said, Will, the streets is like kennels. You know, you got the pit bulls, you got the chihuahuas, you got the little miniature, you know, pup, you got all the little Yorkies, you got all these type of animals, you know what I mean? In the men category. He said, one thing they always gonna respect, Will, is the pit bull. He said, if you always display yourself as a man, you stand with your head high, your shoulders upright, and you walk like a pit bull, they gonna respect you. So that's why I have the ability to go to these hoods and be anywhere I wanna be. Because they know I'm a pit bull. It's in me, it's not a, it's not it's in me, not on me. I, I I got some I, I got some kids that I bro, I know I know some dangerous kids, man. They call me Unk, big homie. I'm only 31. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, man. I'm in at Little Cali. I'm in, I'm in the hood. I'm all over the place. I go I go serve them communities. I go speak to them because I know the power that I have. But we got a, we got a long way to go. And, 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 and they got to realize that they never going to stop killing us. They're not going to stop killing There's nothing you can say. You can march to your feet, turn red and bloody. They're not going to stop killing us. Cause they're afraid. They're afraid. Uh, 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 um, a Rastafarian man, and don't quote me on this, but a Rastafarian man told me a crazy story about Hitler, and he told me that um, he said that uh, Hitler was trying to protect the chosen people. He tried to prevent those men from coming over to America, stealing the chosen people history. Hitler wrote down in the journal before he died and they never let this document out. But the who's who's in the woke woke of the world, no. The Hitler said, the day that the chosen people rise, it will be hell to pay. Hey, so I want to dive in on that. I want to dive in on that because I think I think there's a lesson to be learned from history here because there was a lot of connections between occult philosophy and what was going on during that time, the types of things that they were researching, the types of beliefs that they had about the nature of humanity, who the real elites were, who the chosen people were. And his whole agenda was to try to protect a group of people that he thought was his, but the tragedy was he adopted a system of coercion that allowed him to try to achieve his ends through violence. And I think we as black folks make the same mistake when we say, hey, I celebrate our value. I love our people. I wanna make our conditions better. So let's get in bed with a system of violence and try to achieve our goals in that way. And I think where we have to be different from Hitler where we have to be different from our white peers, where we have to be different from the people who hate us, is we have to say, no, our gift is not in the realm of coercion. Our gift is in the realm of creativity. And the reason why people are threatened by us and feel the need to use violence against us in the first place is because they know the possibilities that can emanate from our consciousness because we are in tune with divine creativity. And we have to push our people to say, stop placing so much faith and promises people are making to you about how they're going to use a system of violence to make you free. The only way to be free is if we create our own freedom by relying on ourselves. That's one of the things that Garvey talked about that I respect so much. And a lot of voluntarists are sleep on that, completely sleep on that. Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey was the first African-American president 
of the world. Mm. He was the mm. first African American. Him, Halal Salese. Halal Salese created uh, uh, Emirates uh, 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 airports, airlines, to fly his fly royal families in to see to see his king. They killed everything that was supposed to show us the way. They killed everything. Mm. I, 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 I know a lot of black people like to forget it, and but you gotta notice this. Michael Max gone. Like so a lot of people just say in this, it, 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 but just think about it. Michael Max gone. Martin Luther King gone, murdered in the hospital. Halas say dead. Marcus Garvey dead. Everybody dead. But Marcus Garvey said something on the day that they arrested him for uh, 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 the fake fraud charges they had about him stealing money from one of his foundations or some crazy charge like that. He said something in there. He said, you might have locked me. Before they put him in the cell, he said, you might have locked me up, but my cubs are still running loose. And when I read that quote by him, I understood what I was and what a lot of young black kings are. We the Cubs running loose. We the Cubs running loose. And 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 we will have freedom. We will have a place in the United States. And we will fight for it by any means necessary. I understand that to free a mind, you got to break them all the way down, all the way back down to an infant mindset and build them back up. That's what I plan on doing with my young kings, man, and my generation. Well, I got two questions for you before we close out. One, yeah. what you said was really interesting about the revolutionaries, um, about them all being gone, them all dying, them all being killed. Do you experience a similar kind of fear with the mess that you're spreading? When I was in Kingston, Jamaica, I was followed by two FBI agents my entire trip. They checked into my hotel the same day, got off on the same floor I did, went to the same restaurants I went to, did everything I did. I'm already, uh, I'm already on their radar. Let me tell you why. I'm one of the first black men to have Caucasian kids calling them kings. And you might not understand the significance of that, but some powerful people taught me the significance of that. I have an ability to leave messages in messages and hide them for certain people, if you get what I'm saying. That's my gift. Definitely. Definitely. My, so it my started second... off as a motivational speaker, but they know they're not dumb. If you start yeah. waking people up with freedom and freeing your mind and not being a slave, and calling yourself a king, nobody like that, man. But I'm willing to die for this. I don't fear death. The, eye, the definition of a king is a man that looks adversity in the eyes and runs towards it, not from it. You got to come get me, baby. We beat on our chest and we fear nothing. We fear nothing. And, they, and now they know we kings. I, we, we kings. They know now. They, we, they know now. We kings. And it's slowly but shortly, the, the world is changing. Y'all just don't see it. They're attacking us in so many ways out in Nigeria. They're killing all those people with SARS and all this crazy mess. That's because the elite know the people are rising. Y'all don't understand it's gotta be bloodshed for a revolution. You ain't know that every war in the world, it was bloodshed. The hardest thing for us right now is we got brothers of the same complexion playing for the opposite team. 
That's why we die. They going to use a black man to kill a black man. That's why we die. That's why it's hard for us to win. Because you don't know who the government got to. You don't know who they... Uh, let me tell you something. I can't take drinks from people. I can't eat out anymore. I don't do anything. I live in a seclusion. I'm 31 years old and I live in a seclusion. I'm always fearful that... I, I notice that all my fan base is overseas. I'm always fearful when I get on the international flight. I don't want to, I don't, I, 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 Miles Monroe, he was killed. He was killed, man. That plane, it wasn't no coincidence. I'm one of the greatest of all time. The man was waking minds up. I know what's up. I got to tell people, you can't tell me you know revolutionary. You got to show me. You got to put your life on the line for this. I don't want to hear none of them loud mouths. I hear them queens. I hear everybody talking. But can you fight a war? <laughs> can you fight a war? You can't fight no war with words. You get punched in the mouth 80 times before you get three words out. That's the problem. Everybody's just talking. Nobody wants to hear you anymore. We want to see you. Actions. Put your life on the line because when they start getting real, they start to fade away a little bit. They start to shut up a little bit. They don't talk as much when they get real. It's real, man. That's why I said I didn't choose to be no revolutionary. Revolutionary chose me. But I'm going to mm. continue to be a motivational speaker. I'm going to continue to revolutionize the minds of inner city kids all over the world. Adults all over the world, black people in London, from China to Ghana to Africa, all over the world, I will be a beacon of light for them. I'm going to go into the wheels for our law. Hey, King, let me say a couple of things here, then we're going to close on one, one question. Number one, for anybody that's listening to this, I think everything he just said about all the things he has to sacrifice and be conscious of in order to fulfill his calling in life it's so important because you, you look at people on Instagram who seem like they have nice things. They got more followers than you. They seem to be living a dream. Every dream has hidden cost. Every dream has a price that you got to pay in order to be able to live that reality. So don't look at a brother like this and think, oh, he gets to go to Italy. Oh, he gets to make money as a motivational speaker. He gets to do those things because he is willing to pay a price that the, or, or, that the majority of people would never be willing to pay. He lives in inconvenience. And most people, would, that that his the dream that he seems to be living would be a nightmare that would break most people. Second thing I want to say, King, shout out to you for, for, for referencing the name of Dr. Miles Monroe, one of the greatest thinkers and speakers of all time, has done so much for our communities. And it's a lot of people in self-help today who use his materials. Don't even quote the brother. Don't even say his name. Don't even, don't even give credit to being influenced by him. And, and I, I recognize Dr. Miles Monroe's ideas when I hear him because that was one of the first preachers when I was a little boy who woke me up and made me think differently about what the gospel really means in terms of our own divinity and embracing that. With that being said, man, one of the greatest, you're going to be showing to me, up. To me, Miles Monroe is the greatest preacher of all time. There's no preacher greater than Miles Monroe. I like T.D. Jones. I ain't got I like no problem with that. None. None greater than the legendary Miles Monroe. When the He's man my spoke, he, you didn't hear it. You felt it. Yeah. You felt it. Yeah. You felt it. He's my goat. All right, bro. November 16th, we got Entrepreneurship Week um, starting Monday, November 16th. And it starts 5 p.m. And William King Hollis is going to be one of our speakers. And he's going to be talking about rising from the bottom in your own life. What are the bottoms in your life? And how can you rise up? William King, I want you to speak to the people and let them know why they need to be at that event and come hear you. Uh, you need to be at this event, man, because it is going to be monumental. It's going to be education, motivation, all mixed in one. It's not going to be the motivation that you listen to and you move to. It's the motivation that you feel and you thrive to. I know this to be true because I've been doing this for over six years. 
Also, I'll be having a lot of tips that I have in my new book, The Best Gifts Come From The Bottom. Um, that's released, uh, available on my website at kinghollis.co. Hopefully the king can get you guys that link. Um, uh, and, and what I wanted to do um, in the next, going into 2021 and going into these next months is really start to teach. Teach, teach, teach. Um, spend my time teaching, educating other speakers, letting them know that it's possible, teaching them marketing tools, teaching them how the internet has cut out the middleman. I want to, this book of the best gifts come from the bottom is a learning tool for me uh, of how I broke into the speaker industry and went over 500 million views on YouTube. So when I get on this um, this, this uh, event with TK Coleman, man, and come the uh, 12th, I believe. Um, 16th. We're going to, it's the what? November 16th. November 16th. On the 16th, uh, we're going to be bringing some fire, man. So I'm going to be bringing motivation and a lot of education and a lot of jewels for you all to take for yourself and make yourself one of the best speakers in the world. Man, brother, I thank you so much for joining us. For everybody that's listening, I hope this not only inspired you, but I hope it provoked you. I hope you heard something today that made you mad. I hope you heard something today that made you think a little bit, that made you a little bit uncomfortable. Because I don't want to just inspire you. I don't want to just make you smile. I want to make you lose a little bit of sleep because you're wrestling with something that we talked about that's going to challenge your worldview at a fundamental level. And if anybody can do it, this brother right here can. William King Hollis. Be sure to check this guy out on Instagram, at William King Hollis. Check him out on Twitter. Go buy the book and rise up from the bottom of your, your, your life. Thanks for joining us, bro. Salute, King.